That was a different. Okay. I have to uh, click. Got it. All right. <laughs> wonderful. Okay. This is Oliver Art Center's 20 questions. I'm Mercedes Michalowski, Executive Director, and we're going to jump right into question number one. Uh, my name is Lauren Everett Finn, and I'm beaming to you from beautiful Honor, Michigan, and on the North Shore of Platte Lake. I'm a water media artist, painter. Wonderful. So that was the next question. Um, what is your favorite medium to work in? Okay. So for sure, acrylic. Acrylic, hands down, because it's so versatile. Um, you can paint watercolor -y with it or add mediums and, um, you know, add like impasto. It's, it's, and the thing that's nice about it is it's all compatible. So um, you really can't go wrong as far as process if you stick with water media. So I have enough trouble. So I'm just going to stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did your interest in art begin? Um, I know that, that I'm unique in that I did not start art as a child. I was really into sports. And um, the only thing I do remember, I like to try and draw Charlie Brown and Snoopy. That's my, <laughs> that's the only art I remember trying. You know, I'd color outside the lines, obviously. But um, for the most, not really, uh, I was more into sports through college. And um, then my first job out of college was doing drafting. Um, yeah, on the table back then, right? So you learned, you had to have the straight edge and all the tools and I figured out I enjoyed drawing. And um, then my husband and I started moving and I taught myself to do pen and ink house portraits just from that drawing experience on the table um, doing the industrial design. And uh, so that's really where it started just doing pen and ink house portraits. And the funny, you know, now looking back, it's the perfect way to start an art career because I learned to see value before. And any of you painters know every, you know, you'll, I'm sure you hear in any class, like you have to be able to see the values. So that was a really great way to start. You know, that's, so it was a good basis for then when I moved into watercolor was next, took classes and then from there into acrylic and kind of self-taught with acrylic. So, yeah. Awesome. I always love to hear when people come to art a little bit later on, you know? Yeah, it's, you know, and I think it's, it's such an engage, once I figured out how much I liked it, it's really engaging. You never arrive either. It's not like you can always get better. So I think I find that really encouraging. So that's yeah. a good point. Um, so who and or what inspires you? So of course, living here, you know, just, it's so beautiful around here. Um, so just the the scenery and, you know, just going about your day is always inspiring. There's always a cool shadow pattern or color combination or, um, I do also walk the dog most mornings. We're lucky enough. We live right close to sleeping bear. And so all the trails, I take the dog most every morning winter. I love winter walks. So we're out there a lot and I find that meditative and inspiring and it's a real good thinking time. Um, so that, and I have a million art books. That's how I taught myself a lot of, you know, a lot of the, you know, back when you didn't have as much access to video and, you know, online classes and stuff. So, um, so that I also have a critique group. I have two of them actually, and I find them inspiring my art buddies. You know, we can go into that art speak that it's like, we know it's like, oh yeah, you can do that shorthand talk <laughs> and that's inspiring. And even just the process of painting, just, just starting. And it, again, it's a puzzle that there's a million ways to finish, but what's the best one for today or the best one for this moment or, so I think just the process is inspiring too. Awesome. Yeah, I think we're pretty lucky to live in the area we live in. Oh, oh yeah. Founded <laughs> by natural Hands inspiration. Down. High five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if your artwork were to be classified as a musical genre, what genre would it be? 
Th this is such a funny question because I am really ignorant as far as musical genres. I have real eclectic tastes. I listen to a lot of music, but I couldn't, you know, other than the basics, I could not tell you what they are. So I had to do, I think I figured out that probably folk music because it's kind of honest and accessible and homey. <laughs> And then I, I got thinking about the question more and I thought, what a fun project to do like, okay, today you have to paint like show tunes. It's like jazz hands <laughs> or, you know, children's music. Or I thought that would be a really fun exercise. Like, no, this is how you have to paint today. So I love doing things like that. So anyway, thanks for that question. It was, it was a fun one. Perfect. Um, so could you give us a verbal snapshot of your work? Um, I hear often that it's happy, um, which I like to see happy things. And that's, that's probably true. Um, because I, I think I usually have quite a bit of value contrast, darks and lights. Um, I spend quite a bit of time on composition and design. So that's always an important part of my work. Um, I do, you know, I've been painting flowers now for quite a while, florals, and um, I'm in like a awkward transition phase right now. And, you know, all, all of the artists, anyone who's painted for any amount of time knows this. And I've been through it enough that it's like, I'm in it, I will get out of it, but I have to just wallow through. So, uh, yeah, Nicholas Wilton, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He, he's a California artist and he does art to life.com is his brand or whatever. And this week he's doing a breadcrumb challenge and it's just like the week. And he has, I think four or five videos and he has really, um, open-ended, interesting questions to try and lead you to where you want to go. So I've been I've been going through that this week. It's been interesting. I did it last year too, and it's one of those exercises that you can take it over and over and over, and wherever you are, it'll shift and switch. So I'm in that awkward, you know, transition phase. <laughs> so I don't know, but anyway, I think it, there's always usually movement too in my work, like angles and you know undulation and anyway. So that's a long answer for that one. <laughs> Um, so I know you use a lot of color, so this might not be fair to you, but if you could only use the shades and tones of one color in your work for the next few years, what color would that be? So this one was a funny one too. So I, I went orange. Orange is like my favorite. I know there's some people who don't like orange and I just feel sorry for them because <laughs> orange is the best. Um, but I was cleaning off my palette because I got the questions quite a while ago, cleaning off my palette. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to play around with orange and black and white. And it was like, oh, no, 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 nope. That's not, <laughs> as much as I love orange, that's not the color. So I think I, I figured out it would be green gold because if it's real, if it's real soft, it almost looks yellow. And then when added with black, it gets really earthy, dark greens. And so, and I laugh because three years, it's like, well, I could do that for two and a half, but not three years. <laughs> that number just made me laugh. <laughs> so, I'm not sure where the number came from. We I just, know. I, I just it thought it there. was funny. It's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not quite three. Two and a half I could do. But. Two and a half. Well, we probably <laughs> allow that. You know, okay. A little fluctuation. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite tool in your art toolkit? Um, so like... A physical tool would be my fingers because I, you know, there's nothing like if I want to soften an edge, I'll lay down a stroke and then just take my thumb and right on the, which isn't a great practice because, you know, it gets on your skin and I'm not, I start with gloves and they're always off within two minutes because I, I'm real tactile. I like to get my hands in it. I do use a barrier cream um, that supposedly helps. It's, and then it's easier to wash your hands off too. But I think my fingers, you know, would, would be, be my favorite. So then what is your least favorite? Um, I dislike varnishing. I hate varnishing day. I, again, I have the dog and the dog hair seems to always find its way into the varnish. 
and I always miss a spot or it's just very frustrating for me. So I think varnish. <laughs> okay. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Especially I a know, dog. dog. My boyfriend people. puts it off. He puts yeah. it off for months. All right. So, um, so what is the best piece of advice you've been given? Um, so as far as art advice, it would be working on more than one painting at a time. Because when I first started, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just never thought about it. And I'm an impatient person. So um, even when I started in watercolor, I'm standing with a hairdryer trying to dry it before I could go to the next step or the next, you know, the next thing that I wanted to do. And um, so that I think is really good advice. The one, so I used to paint, if I painted on one, then again, impulsive, and I'd start and think, oh, well, that dark, I wonder how that would look light, and so I'd change it, and, you know, then i take a lot of progress photos, too, and then later on, I'd be looking back at the progress photos, it's like, oh, I should have stopped there, it was really good there, so, you know, I had like 10 paintings, one on top of the other, so it's a good idea just to have another one, and if you have that idea, go to the next one and do that idea on that one instead of one on top of the other. So that I think is is uh, good advice. Hmm, interesting. Um, do you prefer to work solo or in collaboration with others? Um, I am a, a solo gal when it comes to to painting. Um, although again, I was thinking about this question, and I thought if if an opportunity came up, if somebody that I really admired or whatever said, let's collaborate on something, let's, I would definitely try it because I like, you know, it's like, I don't know if I'd hate it. I'm guessing I probably would, <laughs> but I don't know for sure. So I would probably try it, you know, just to see what would happen. But uh, yeah, for the most part, no, I, I, I'm too, I'm too nosy. I don't know. I can't focus if there's other things happening, so. Gotcha. Um, so which famous artist would make a good president of the United States? So I don't think any visual artist would really make a good president just because we're very used to getting our, we get our own way all day long. You know, we don't have to compromise. We don't, it's like we're the boss. We get to do exactly what we want. Um, so, but then I thought maybe some musician because they're used to collaborating, you know, and working with, you know, I thought maybe, and I don't know of a specific musician that I would think would be a good president. But I, I, plus who would want that job? Honestly, you gotta be a little nuts is sort of what I figure. Anyone who wants that job, I don't get them, but I don't get them. <laughs> Well, I think that's true. I do think though visual artists have a lot of qualities that could um, assist them in a job like that. Yes, yes. I, you know, like I thought Da Vinci maybe because he was curious and, you know, knew, you know, tried a lot of things and, and yeah, had, you know, great knowledge of a lot of things. So, you know, for sure an assist, but as far as collab, you know, again, collaboration, mm, not so good at it. I don't know. <laughs> True, but I can see your point. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite meal? Um, one that I don't have to prepare. I, I just get tired of it. It's uh, my husband does not like to cook and yeah. So he'll go get the carry out days, but, uh, yeah, if I'm making it, if it were a specific meal, probably Thanksgiving dinner, just cause that's my favorite holiday and probably that Thanksgiving would be my favorite specific meal. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I know when I got married and had my daughter, I called my mother and apologized to her. And she said, what are you apologizing for? And I said, for all those nights that you came home from work and I asked what was for dinner. Oh, then it now it's you happening crazy. to me and it's awful. <laughs> I know. It's like, so what sounds good? Oh, I don't know. Whatever you make. It's like, not the answer I was looking for. Nope, I need some help not. here. Yep. I'm like, toast it is. <laughs> I know, cereal. Yay. It's cereal day. Cereal day. Yep, exactly. Our default is peanut butter and jelly. Oh, there you go. That's Yes, that's a good one. You get protein, Always. fruit, grain. Yeah, it's got it all. It's got it all. So what type of art or which artists hang on the walls in your home? Um, in the house is a lot of mine and some uh, acquired pieces that both Don and I 
as my husband um, decided on. Um, I, I tend to buy, and then it's like, it doesn't matter if he likes it or not, because I like it. Um, here in the studio, though, I have, I have like all my friends around me. I don't have my work in here. I have um, like some of the local artists I have is um, Jessica Covance there and Greta Bolger. Um, I just acquired Mark Mahaffey over the last weekend. You know, just I have uh, a lot of my friends. If, if, um, if an artist is doing something that I find interesting and if I can afford it, I'll try and support them just by buying something. Um, I love to buy art. I really do. I, I wish we had more walls and I wish I was good at met, like making a gallery wall in the house, but I, I can't figure that out. I'm not, you know, so I'd need a decorator to come do that. Cause that's, I don't know. I don't want to take the time. Maybe that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so what advice would you give your younger self? Um, be true to your aesthetic. Um, I mean, try on different, different styles or whatever, but, um, be true to what you like. It's cause that's, that's, that's most important, right? Um, you paint what you like and everybody isn't going to like it. You'll find your, your group. Um, the other thing is, um, uh, if you start down this road, you're going to be judged. You got to just get used to being judged positively and negatively and just get comfortable with it. It's like you have to grow kind of a thick skin and take it all. It's like, yeah, I see what you're saying, but I disagree and I'm going to go on my own way or whatever. Just get used to being judged. It's it happens. So that's just part of it. Yeah, that's like second nature when you're looking. Yeah. At art. Yeah. And if, you, if you're if you're getting your feelings hurt all the time, then that's not the not the job for you. <laughs> it's keep, you know, keep it as a hobby, maybe, you know, yeah. you should, you know, be true to yourself. So um, if you could time travel backward or forward to safely make art for a week, um, what date or time period would you choose? As a woman, I'm not going back. I can tell you that um, <laughs> I would go forward in time far enough that you could do that instant travel that I would like, you know, um, I would love to like, oh, I'm going to go visit this person or, oh, I'm, I feel like going to New Zealand. I can afford it and I don't have to fly for however 18 hours or however long it is. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'm not going back though. I don't want to go back. <laughs> well, that's interesting because I think you're my first 20 questions that has said the future. So. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. No. But I, well, think I think it's a great you, point. Like I say, as a woman, it's like, Ooh, I, that would just, I would just be angry. So I'm angry enough still. So. <laughs> um, so is there anything that you have to have uh, to make art when you sit down in your studio and you're ready? Yeah. To you know, I have these like little routine, right? So I come in, make the coffee. Um, and I do like I'll put on classical music to start something without words because I'm that's my thinking time deciding what I'm going to be working on and and uh, yeah it's almost always there's noise like when I'm doing planning or thinking or you know trying to design something then it has to be instrumental and once I'm um, figured things out and I'm just executing then uh, it can be anything I listen to podcasts or book tapes or I can, excuse me, even have on like a TV show as long as it's dialogue heavy. So I don't have to look at it and I can listen to it. Um, but I do need silence doesn't work for me. I get like twitchy. <laughs> so yeah, I, I need noise for sure. Yeah. So is there a gallery or a museum that you would love to have your work featured in? Well, any museum. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't a specific um and gallery i'm i'm good with galleries the one gallery i love to visit so i would love to have worked there so i could visit more often is tamarack gallery up in northport and there's always something in there that delights the child in me there's like i don't know i just love that place the attic you go upstairs and yeah i would love that would be one maybe that i would yeah i love that gallery Wonderful. I hear that a lot. 
Do you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's a great one. It is. Yeah. We are again very lucky in northern Michigan. We are Oh, there's so many. The the artistic community is just saturated and exceptional and you know, it's just yeah. we really are lucky. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you know when a work is finished? Yeah, that's right. That's that's the big question. <laughs> that's the hard question. Um so for me, I have like a checklist that I'll share in like my classes. Some of the classes I have, it's like your, your cheat sheet for knowing, you know, questions I ask myself, like, did I do this? Did I do that? Um, so that's the first steps. I will take pictures of it and make sure to see it on the computer screen because that just kind of tricks you a little bit to know if it's done. Um, I set them aside for a while. Because, you know, when I, when you paint, I think this is true of most everyone. If you're having a really good day, then you're thinking everything's clicking. This is fabulous. It's a wonder, you know, this is like my masterpiece. This is working great. And then you go to bed and the next morning it's like, well, it's okay. But <laughs> I thought it was way better yesterday. And the, the opposite's true too. If you're having a bad day and you think, ugh, this is crap. You know, and then the next morning it's like, oh, it's not so bad. So that plays into it. I think you need that distance, um, a little bit of distance. And also I have a couple critique groups that always help. You get too close to something and you can't, it's hard to judge. So all of a sudden somebody, you know, someone in critique will say, well, have you thought of that? It's like, I can't believe I didn't. You know, <laughs> it's like, that's exactly what it is. I knew it was something, but couldn't figure it out. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and then eventually it's like, there's some though that you just know, you know, but that's, that's pretty rare, you know, that, that, you know, for sure. No, this is done. I'm happy. Um, so, yeah. And finally, where can we find your work? So physically you can find it at, um, Tweeden Fine Art in Harbor Springs um synchronicity gallery in Glen arbor i have a few little pieces at oliver at uh, mary's gift gallery um my website lauren everett or lauren gets you there too um and daily paintworks um the warm-ups i do warm-ups that's another one of my processes when i first get in the studio um, and so I, if, when I finish one of those, I'll, I'll put them up on daily paint works. So yeah, that's it. Awesome. Is there anything that I missed that you you want to share or, or talk about? Uh, did I talk about the warm ups? No, you didn't, did. which I okay. find So th yeah, that's a big part of my process. And I, I should have mentioned that at some point. Um, so I took a class from Robert Burridge. He's a California artist. He came out I don't know, out this way. And I took a workshop with him and he suggested that you do like small warm ups, you know, when you first get in, like just to get just like anything, you know, sports or whatever you do and you kind of warm up and get, you know, get your thinking going. And um, so I take the I have them stacked right here. I just uh, it's like a 16th of a what this is like a stack of them of uh, watercolor paper you know, a 16th of a page. It's almost like five and a half by seven and a half. And then I just work on five or six of them at a time. And they're at all different um, levels of completion. And uh, it, it just gets me into that mode. Like, okay, what do I need? You know, just loosens me up and starts that thinking process going. And uh, if I finish one, then I'll put the date. So they're all titled just by the date that they're finished. And then I um, sell them on Daily Paintworks. But it's a great exercise because you can try things. There's, there's not a lot of um, time invested or it's real easy. It's easy and you get into it and then you're kind of warmed up and ready to move on to your larger, your really important work. <laughs> so, yeah. So sorry. I, that's about it. That's what I would add. Yeah. It's a good exercise. I recommend it. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it was it was great. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So thanks very much. Thank you.